Hello and welcome back to Rock Cycle. Hope you're having a good day. Now today we've got something a bit different to do than the normal stuff. And this is going to be like a statistical breakdown of Reading and Leeds Festival 2020. And by that I specifically mean genre, gender and race at the festival. Now thank you so much for all the support on the last few videos. For a channel of my size we really got a lot of comments, a lot of likes, a lot of subscribes off it. And I really appreciate that. Hopefully we can keep it up but yeah no pressure whatever. I've so these topics today we're going to be looking at are very polarizing. I'm going to give you like the raw data and then my interpretation of the data, but you can fully disagree with me. You may fully agree with me. A lot of people have lots of different opinions about this, especially gender and race at the festival. So you can comment whatever you like, say whatever you like, dislike the video if you want to, but just be civil in the comments. I've seen a lot of posts on Twitter and Facebook about people, people being pretty nasty in the comments about that. And we don't really want that here on the channel. So you can disagree. Just, just be nice is all I ask in the comments. Well, first of all, we're going to be looking at genre and that's really sort of just a bit of fun. The other two issues, race and gender, are a lot more serious. I think they're both extremely unimportant and extremely important at the same time, if that makes sense. It shouldn't matter really about the gender and the race at a festival. If you make good music, you make good music, that should be it. But with the current social climate going on, I think it's good to look at these things. And like, whether you think it's important or not, that's up for debate. But I think it's good to look at it and good to see what's going on. So this is based off the 90 or so acts that we've already got for the festival. Now that is only about half the lineup, so there is potential for big things to change. But I think the acts they've announced are probably a good representation of what is going to be at the festival. Because they want to like show off all the sorts of things they have at the festival. But yeah, a lot could change by the time we do get the full lineup. So if you're interested in seeing an update video on this, let me know down in the comments because, well, I put in a lot more effort for this one than I do for my normal videos, you may notice, because they're, they're pretty easy to do, to be honest. Okay, well, this is my first time using this screen recording software, so hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I'm just going to throw in some screenshots of the graphs that I've got. So first of all, we're looking at genre. Now, genre can be very subjective, so I've just tried to fit it down into five categories. I'm going to try upload the spreadsheet of how I've categorised acts. Some of them could easily fit into two different ones, so you can have a look at that if you want and see whether you agree with me or disagree. For these, to classify these acts, I have mostly used my own knowledge and understanding of the band from listening to them. And for bands and artists at a festival I don't know, I've either used what Wikipedia has defined them as or what Apple Music has defined them as. So first of all, we see here that rock is still the primary genre at the festival, whatever anyone may say, and that does take up 45% of the lineup. But that is a decrease compared to 50% last year and 47% the year before, and that was considered a very un-rock festival back in 2018. For all these statistics from last year, I'm basing these off Jack Webb's video. He's another YouTuber who does similar content to me, so I recommend you check him out. It was a very useful video to help me base this year's analysis of last year's for genre. We see pops massively decreased. It was quite a defining genre at the festival last year, so that's why I've included it on here. Last year it made up about 20% of the lineup. This year it's only down to four. And I'm quite surprised by that. People like Charlie XCX were very popular last year, and especially Billie Eilish, apparently having the largest crowd Reading has ever had, although I don't think that's officially confirmed anywhere. We've got very little alternative at the festival coming in at 2%, but then I do think I was quite strict with my definition of alternative. I think mean, there's a lot of alternative acts there, but I would say they're more like they're, they're like alternative indie rock or alternative rap rather than just a straightforward alternative genre. Dance music comes in at about 10%. Now that's about similar to last year, but that's still a massive decrease from what we've seen about five years ago, where it made up about 20, 25% of the lineup. And I do think that's because the festivals realise they can't compete with die-hard dance music fans compared to Creamfields and SW4, which are going on at the same weekend. If you're a die-hard dance music fan, you probably want to go to a dance music festival. I think here we're just going to have a little bit of dance music at the festival as a bonus for people who enjoy other genres but also enjoy dance. Now, the big one that a lot of people are also talking about is rap and R&B, coming in at 38% of the lineup with 35 names that I put in that category. That is taking up a massive chunk of the lineup. It took up a lot last year and that was only 29% of the lineup. But while there is a lot of rap music at the festival, I feel there is a bit of a disconnect between whoever books the rap music at the festival and what people want. 
Last year it was especially bad, getting people like Dappy headlining the radio on extra stage was a bit of a joke to be honest. This year does seem to be better, but it missed out people like Dave, Skepta, Travis Scott, Trippy Red, and loads of others that people really wanted at the festival. Perhaps there's reasons they couldn't book them behind the scenes, but perhaps it's just bad booking by the festival. So yeah, overall, this is a rock festival, just about. And I do think the festival is going to stay that way, although it could completely change, to be honest, none of us really know. But I think rap has shown that it is here to stay at the festival. And I personally think it's good to embrace these other genres at a festival. I like listening to a variety of music and seeing a variety of acts. In the past few years, I've really enjoyed seeing Travis Scott, Post Malone, Eminem at the festival. I've, I've had good fun seeing. Mike Shinoda too, that was probably my favourite, but he's not quite classic rap. I think it's also worth mentioning that we've seen a lot less day-defined genre days, such as last year we had the Foo Fighters day, that was clearly a hard rock day. We had the 975 day, where that was a bit more of an indie rock day. Then we had 21 Pilots Post Malone, which was sort of a rap, an alternative style day. This year it seems to be all over the place with no defined days. Now, if you're getting a weekend ticket like me, that's fine. I'm happy to see a bit of everything every day. But if you wanted to buy a day ticket, I think that's a bit of a letdown. Because I've spoken to some people, they really want to go see Rage Against the Machine. But the kind of people that want to buy a day ticket to see Rage Against the Machine, a lot of them aren't interested in seeing Cortinas. Now, I have done a further breakdown of the rock genre. I know you could do this with every genre, but I personally feel that rock is much more diverse than the others. Maybe that's just because I just listen to a lot more rock music than the rest. But I think it's important to also talk about it because... There's been lots of controversy within the rock community, sort of, it seems to have, and Twitter has turned into a war of rock fans versus indie fans. And we can really see why here, indie is taking up the big part of this, it's taking up over half of the rock lineup with 22 acts, which comes in at 54% of the rock there being indie and pop rock. And a lot of this is very dark fruit style indie, such as Tudor Cinema Club, Sam Fend, and of Cortinas, of course, compared to his more sort of classic and post-Britpop style indie. I know some people wouldn't really even call indie rock music, and I think I have been quite liberal here with what I am classing as rock music, so I'm just going to include everything that someone could possibly define as rock music, really. But while indie is very big and very popular, I think other genres within rock are certainly very popular as well, and they shouldn't have been neglected as this. The next biggest one that takes up 24% of the rock lineup is punk, pop punk and emo. Now, there's quite a few of those names and a lot of hard rock names, but these are typically pretty small bands playing on the pit. There's very little of this actually on the main stage or on the Radio 1 stage besides Idols and Rage Against the Machine. And I personally felt really let down by the pit this year. I thought it was one of the worst lineups we've had in there for years. Yeah, there's still a few decent bands. Well, there's quite a few actually ones I do quite like, such as Fever 333, Creeper and Sleeping With Siren. But I think a lot of the rest of it's quite a bit weaker compared to what we've seen in the past few years. Very little alternative rock coming in at 5%, which is a shame because I love that. But again, I was quite strict with what I would call alternative. There's lots of acts that you could call alternative, but I think a lot more of them really fit into indie and pop rock rather than alternative rock. And coming in last at hard rock, seven acts from hard rock taking up 17% of the rock lineup. Honestly, wish there was a bit more Hard Rock Day. I did really enjoy it last year. And I was surprised because the Hard Rock Day at the festival sold out the fastest by a long way with Foo Fighters, A Day to Remember, and the Shikari, The Distillers, Frank Carter. That day sold out miles better than everyone else. And Melvin Ben, the festival organiser, said there was going to be a bit of a rock resurgence this year and we're going to see a lot more of it. Maybe there's going to be more to be added, but we're yet to see much of it done despite what they've been saying in interviews and whatever since the last festival. And now on to the more serious topics. Here we're going to be looking at gender. So we've split this graph into, or this one is, all male acts taking up 78% and acts with at least one female taking up 22%. And honestly, this is just tragic. Like, I do support feminism, but I'm not normally one to go off on feminist rants and whatever, but this genuinely pissed me off quite a bit. And I do find it quite annoying because the festival have been saying they've been working on this a lot. They've even set up their own charity to help give women more time in, st in the studio to record new music. And now if we go down here to compare to like, here we've got all male acts, acts that have men and women and only female members. They only take up 18%. 
Now, a lot of people say, don't book on gender, book on ability. And I do kind of agree with that. I think you shouldn't just be booking women for the sake of having women there. But then there's plenty of talented women that could easily fit into this lineup, which they haven't booked. With just some examples being Wolf Alice, Yonica, Haim, Florence and the Machine, Halsey, Peggy Goo, Lord, Marmaz X, Vukovi, The Regrets, and there's so many more. Like these are, there isn't a lack of talented female artists. They could have easily booked these and fit these into that lineup. And I think they'd all be great additions with many people happy to see them. Now I know maybe there was scheduling reasons or other reasons why they couldn't book these female acts. Apparently they were trying to book Billie Eilish for this year and she's on tour in Asia at the time of the festival, so couldn't do it. But there's a lot of female acts out there. I don't really think there's an excuse for the percentage to be this low. I do think it's also important to say that the festivals aren't the only place to blame the lack of female representation. I think there's problems with every stage of the music industry and it's just the most obvious at a festival because you see a poster and you can see the lack of females compared to other things in the music industry where there's still problems, it's just not as easy to visualise it. I think there's problems at every level from learning instruments at school. For example, I used to learn guitar at school. There were seven guys doing it, one girl. I think there's problems at that level. I think there's problems with getting time in the studio. I think there's problems with promotion. I think there's problems with record deals. And I think there may be only small problems at each level, but it all really adds up to the result that we get something like this, where we only see women making up not even a quarter of the lineup. I think a great example of a festival that is doing this right is Mad Cool. They've quite a similar kind of festival, but yes, they've got a bit more pop music there compared to Reading and Leeds. But that's one of the best lineups in the world, a lot of people are saying, and they've got loads of massive female names there. And they're doing a lot on their social media to really champion and, sh and shine a spotlight on their female artists that are playing. I think this is a bit more of a positive note to end the video on. There has been some controversies with not enough artists from different ethnicities at the festival in the past, although not to the same degree as different genders at the festival. And for simplicity's sake, I basically put this into two categories. White Europeans and Americans, and well, I put Australians in that category as well, and then every other ethnicity. And a uh, mixed group doesn't mean mixed race or anything like that. That means groups such as Run The Jewels, who are members from different ethnicities. I will say one of the problems of the way I've done this, where I've just grouped everyone who isn't white, European and American into one category. There's some problems with doing that, partly because, well, maybe there's lots of representation from one group of ethnicity and there's not so much from another one. I'm really struggling to say that word, ethnicities, the plural. <laughs> There is a bit of disagreement about what the goal should be for representation of different ethnicities at the festival. Some people think they should take up a similar-ish percentage to what they take up in the population, and some people think it should be about 50-50. Now, I personally don't entirely know what I think it should be, but I think we have a good amount here. I think there's lots of different representations of different cultures and people who make up the population of the United Kingdom and who make up the music that we listen to in the United Kingdom. But on the whole, I think that's a good level of representation. So overall, that's what I found from my well, statistical analysis of the festival. I'll be adding in my spreadsheet in the description somewhere so you can have a look at that if you want to see how I classified things. I think genres can be a bit debatable, but that's also my interpretation of it and what I think about these different levels of statistics at the festival. Maybe you agree with me, maybe you disagree, but I just want to say again, just be civil in the comments because there has been some really nasty posts on Facebook and Twitter about this. Just be nice people, really. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed or at least found it somewhat informative. If you want to like, share, subscribe, that would be great. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, that would be good fun too. Sometimes I tweet fun things. Well, at least I tell myself that I do. And that is at rockcycle with a double underscore. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.